Welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. I'm Jack Curry, and today I'm joined by Charlie Hayes, former Yankee. He was part of the 1996 championship team, and he was a third baseman who pitchers wanted the ball to be hit to because Charlie was the kind of guy who was going to scoop up everything at third. And Charlie, as we get started, first of all, thanks for joining us. Second of all, how are you and your family handling this challenging time during the pandemic? Well, we pretty much just got each other. Key Brian, uh, the baby son that plays ball, he lives uh, differently from where we at, but he's not coming into contact with anybody but us, uh, me and my wife. And then the other boy, Tyree, uh, we brought him into the house and advised him to stay with us. And then I've got a baseball academy. No one can come out here. We cleaned it up really, really well. So Key Brian comes here, we hit, so he's, He's fortunate to have a place where he can work out. But other than that, we're all doing good. Uh, you know, we're probably getting a little tired of each other. But uh, I guess if that's the worst thing that can come out of it so far, then we'll take that. I'm going to ask you about Key Brian in a second. Obviously, one of the top prospects in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. But i got to start with Dad. I'm not going to start with the son. I want to start with Pops. You have a distinction that very few major leaguers have. You caught the final out of a World Series, obviously 1996, Game 6, Yankees-Braves at Yankee Stadium. How often do you think about that moment, Charlie? Well, uh, personally, you know, when it happened and then, you know, you reflect back on everything that got you to that point, I thought about that quite a bit, uh, probably the first 10 years after that. But uh, being around uh, the Yankees and doing a lot of PR stuff, and it never goes away. You know, I, I would think now after, you know, 20, whatever, 30 years or however many it is, it would kind of went away. But uh, it kind of just stuck to me like a nickname, I guess. And, uh, you know, I try to interact with the fans and doing a lot of the Yankee stuff. I see a lot of people that love the Yankees. And uh, – I've made friends with a lot of them. So there's not a day that goes by someone doesn't post that thing or make a comment through Messenger or something where we became friends through social media about that. So it's kind of wild. I tell people all the time, you know, I try to keep things in perspective. But, uh, you know, a couple of friends of mine said, man, you always sign everything. You just stop. And I say, well, one day they're not going to want my autograph. So. That's how I look at it. <laughs> so. You're a smart man, Charlie. Now, when you catch Lemke's pop-up, I think you would admit to me that was a routine pop-up. On the pitch before, you almost ended the World Series with a miraculous catch. You go flying into the Braves' dugout and got your hand on that pop-up. How close did you come to making that play? And, wow, that would have been quite I, a way to end the World Series. I still don't believe to this day that I missed it. What happened was uh, my right hand was resting on the uh, camera. And I guess the camera guy spun around. And when he spun around, he spun me right on down in the dugout. And it just kind of like grazed my glove. But uh, I still think I should have had it. Uh, I didn't get in there far enough. Uh, you know, that would have been great to come running out of the dugout with the ball. But I'll take what, what happened. You know. A lot of people forget about that, but when everything was over with, my finger was broke. My wow. baby finger on my right hand was broke. So I don't know if I broke it when I fell in the dugout. I think I did. So when I'm running back out there, you know, before the next pitch, I just felt a sharp pain, but I never looked down. And then, you know, you get caught up in the moment. Um, you know, being on the Yankees or a dream come true, Playing in Yankee Stadium was another dream come true because those fans made that place rock. I remember going out in the seventh inning of that game. I rode the bench. I tell my parents out here at my baseball academy that all the time. Hey, see, just because you're not a starter, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get an opportunity or, you know, you won't be you. So you got to stay in, a, in the right frame of mind. And that's how I was. The history was I was going out there in the seventh inning anyway. so. That was the good thing about playing with Mr. Torrey. You knew your role, and he was going to use everybody. So, you know, it was a routine pop-up. And everybody was like, what were you thinking? And uh, I was thinking I was going to Disneyland. But 
I wasn't the MVP, and I never would have been the MVP, on, you know, with that group of guys. But it was one of the defining moments in my career from a standpoint that everybody remembers me as that. Charlie, when you got to the Yankees in 96, they got Wade Box, future Hall of Famer at third base. How did you make that adjustment to know that you were going to have to share playing time, you are going to have to figure that out? How did that go? When I got traded, I thought I was going to the Mets because I already knew the Yankees had Box. So I was thinking – why would I be going to the Yankees? And then when I got to Anaheim, I was in the room. Uh, it had to be, I don't know, 6 o'clock. And Joe Torre called my phone. He was like, where you at? I said, I'm in my room. He was like, there's a car downstairs waiting on you. I'm thinking, I just got up, stayed up all night, just got up that morning, flew all the way from Pittsburgh across to L.A. I'm not going to play till the next day. So... I get in the limo or whatever, the car service. I get to the stadium. I'm running up the tunnel. And the clubhouse guys meet me with a uniform. <laughs> and I'm putting it on. I'm running. I get some swings. And then I run out for the national anthem. And I play the game. I, I think I went like two for five or three for five. Had a couple of good RBIs. And, uh, you know, Joe Torrey had told me that, he thought I was going to be in there every day, at least this series, because they had a whole bunch of lefties and stuff like that. But uh, I guess the next day, Box played. He's supposed to have been out. But I, all of a sudden, he played, and uh, and that's how it took off. But uh, I just tried to make the most of it. Marion or Duncan was there. I had played with him in Philly. You know, he took me on his wing and made sure I was comfortable. And then he knew I was just going to play baseball and whatever role they gave me. I was going to do it the best I could. It was just a great opportunity for me. I went to sleep 20-something games out, and I woke up two up in first place. So I had to make some changes. I had to call my guy and tell him I'm not going to need the boat right now because I'm going to be playing some meaningful baseball, which it was always meaningful every day because I was a professional. So you know. I wanted to switch gears and ask you about Key Bryan. I, 23 years old. He's a terrific defensive player, very good hitter. He, he's right on the cusp of being a major leaguer. Give us your scouting report on your own son. First of all, good kid. I think I have to cut my hair low so you don't see all the great. Uh, but I don't think he put one of them in my head. You know, out of three, you have one that does all the right things. And it's been him so far. Uh, you know, he's just been that kind of kid. He never wanted attention on him. I think he's growing out of that now, and I think he's ready for the major leagues now. You know, it's hard to tell a kid you're not doing something the exact because, you know, with hitting, there's a fine line and all that. But when you're successful, it's hard to change. Mm. Last year was the first time that he scuffled a little bit, and he realized that he needed to make adjustments because I told him all the time that's what pro ball is you got to constantly make adjustments from at bat to bat pitch to pitch you know you got to be like an elephant you got to remember everything and you pertain all the stuff that going to help you and make you a better player Charlie it's it's so cool to hear you talk about Key Brian and the rest of your family and your love for baseball and your passion for it I really appreciate you giving us some time today I know we're all hoping that baseball gets back in some form and I I know you want to see Key Bryan play in 2020. So like you, we're saying our prayers, and I want to thank you so much for giving us some time today. Yeah, thank you, Jack, for having me.